In the video where I made the Water Street Freight Warehouse from Walther's kits in N-Scale, this was the location for the building. Back then, the layout was mostly pink foam, a mountain range, and some brown paint. You can see where I proposed some parking for the workers and some basic roads to and from the warehouse, but a whole lot's changed since then. Since then, I've laid in more roads and I've done some more scenicing. I've added some houses and it's now time to get the warehouse site ready to add the building to. So much like the concrete pad I poured for the gravel company, I turned back the spackle, only this time I added black craft paint to the mix to get a more even gray tone all the way through the mix. You don't need much of the black acrylic paint mixed in with the white spackle as it can easily get turned too dark with the excess paint. So I made sure to add small amounts and thoroughly stir it and blend until going back and adding more paint if I needed it. Here we can see the hillside with the resin houses and the new roads leading to the warehouse and to the coal distribu distributor on the other side of the tracks. This time around, I just freehanded the pour. I had marks where the outside of the building would lie and made sure to keep it clear plaster. This way the building would sit flush with the plaster and the concrete as opposed to sitting on top of it and having that lip around the frame of the building. This plastic spatula really helped to get the plastic up to the edges of the lines and to keep the thickness down below that of the road grade. For now, it's all about getting the plaster smooth and letting it set for a few days to cure. After the plaster was completely cured, like I said, I let it sit for two or three days. I came back in with a metal ruler and I use it as a straight edge. First, I used my hobby knife to tick off where I wanted the stress breaks or the joins to be for the plaster. Then I used a straight edge to carve these lines. I tried to keep the lines clean, but if you get some chips or if they fracture along the, the length of the line, you can use it to look like stress uh, cracks in the pavement. So depending on how new or old or worn you want your concrete to appear, this will influence how many chips or cracks you cut or come into being on your pad line. To highlight these expansion joints, I use brown pastel chalk, apply with a stiff flat brush, and, um, and then I also at some point added some darker gray all by itself and some mixed in with the brown just to give some variation in shade. Some of it being dirt, some of it may be uh, grease or oil, some of it been there for a long time, some of it fresh, just to keep the variety going. I then came back with a two inch paintbrush and I kind of ground the color powders into the lines. And then with broad sweeps from that paintbrush, the powder was spread over the concrete and to weather and age it and look like runoff from rain. Originally, this space on the other side of the road, I had planned for that space to be kind of a hilly tree grove. But with the addition of the tiny houses, I had to move the road closer to the warehouse. So this space became a parking lot for the employees. The parking lot was built by adding some PVA glue and then dumping some tile grout on top of it. I'll eventually come back and, and color it with some static grass, add it to the sidings and around the, um, the parking area, as well as you can see in the background, I added a dirt road beyond the tar. This is my freight warehouse set in place. We've come a long way from where I started this project a year ago. Time to get some trucks and dock workers printed, painted, and placed. Anyhow, until next time, happy railroading.